so I want to go through uh, just a few things to show how powerful affect is um, in everything. So those both bottom up, that was good, or alternatively in a moment we'll, we'll look at some things for, uh oh, that was scary. And those things where you anticipate and say, I want to do this, or oh, I'm going to be afraid of this, so on. All of those things um, are affect. And it changes everything that we do, both in education and the rest of our lives. So I've just put together a few of the things to give you a sense of it. My favorite is the Capgras delusion. Now I know that some of you were at Harvard and I talked about this and so pretend you didn't hear that. Shut off your hippocampus so it's like new. Um, so the Capgras delusion is for me the, the most interesting uh, psychiatric um, symptom ever. So here's what happens. A psychiatrist is in his office and a person walks in, often with uh, a company with someone, um, and their uh, malady, the report of what's wrong with them, is that, and they tell you right away, my, I'm going to use the word wife, but th typically a spouse, uh, some loved one, has, they report that they're an imposter, that someone has uh, come in and taken over, um, so I'll, I'll do it as a man, my wife, and they'll do it usually in conspiratorial tones with the psychiatrist, my wife is an imposter. It's someone who's taken over my wife. And they have a, usually a, like it's maybe Martians or it's the CIA or it's just a, you know, an evil twin. But somehow somebody's come in to this person's life and is an imposter pretending to be the person's spouse. And then the psychiatrist says, well, does it look like her? And they say, exactly. She's like, exactly. It's amazing. She looks just like her, but she's not your wife. No, she's, a, she's someone playing my wife, but it's unbelievable. Anyway, so you go through this, and the psychiatrist used to treat them as a psychiatric problem. You go back to well, what happened in your past, what did you do to your mommy, all these things, and not, not curable. They continue to see the imposter. Now we know it's a neurological thing, okay? And um, it's very interesting to think what happens. Um, so a key thing about it that gives you a sense of where it's going to go is it's never, the, it's never the postman or the lady next door or anything like that. It's never them that's an imposter. It's always a loved one. It could be a parent, it could be a spouse, could be a child, but it's a loved one. Um, am I doing something wrong? Um, I'm just getting to the meat of this, so I don't want to, yeah. Um, and that's key. Um, I'm just tempted to see what question would you want to ask to kind of get deeply into what's gone wrong? Because sometimes people have this wonderful intuitive sense of what you'd... So here's a person who is completely convinced that their spouse is an imposter and no amount of therapy fixes it. What test would you do to find out what really has gone wrong here? Anybody have, this is a hard thing, but once I tell you what happens, it'll all seem very obvious. Um, all right, so I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one more detail. That if the spouse calls on the phone, they go, oh, it's you, thank God you've called. There's, there's, there's a woman that's been pretending she's you the whole time. She's right in the other room. On the phone, there's no imposter, imposter problem. Very striking, kind of like, whoa. By the way, there's a video of this. I'll, show, I'll give you where you can go and watch this. You can entertain your loved one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what's happened? Um, it's clear this person is normal in many respects. And in terms of, I want to go back to the slides, sorry. This person absolutely has perfect recognition systems. They recognize exactly what their spouse looks like. Don't have any problem there, okay? And they can tell you and describe it and draw it and they know who it is. What's happened is that there's been a break 
between this way of knowing, recognizing their features, and this way of knowing. They've had a, a stroke, something's gone wrong, that disconnects this from this. Now you say, well, why would that do that? So here's what it shows. That actually, when you are walking around, you are always emotionally recognizing everything. That internal part I've been talking about is always valuing. Is this valuable to me? Is this scary? Is it uh, attractive? Any of these things. What's its value to you? Everything. Your nervous system is all the time, that third part of your, that first part of your nervous system, sorry, is saying what's important. Now who's important to you? Your spouse. One of the most important things. Around which you typically have great feeling. Now you don't know it, but we can measure it. When you walk home and you see your spouse, your whole body shows emotion. You are recognizing them and you feel something about them. Now sometimes you can be angry with them and you know we all get that, okay? But there's emotions that you feel that are very strong with your spouse. Well what happens with the Capgras is that they see their spouse but they don't feel anything. For the first time they're going, what it shows is how wonderfully this part of the brain colors everything. The brain is saying, but how do you feel? And the brain says, I don't feel anything. And the brain says, wait a minute, this looks like her, but the feeling part is the most important thing, and it's saying you don't recognize your feeling about her? Then it couldn't be her. So your brain confabulates a story to make sense of this. It's amazing. Your brain says, okay, wait a minute. It's this part isn't the driver. Because otherwise you'd say, okay, it is my wife, but I just don't feel anything. This part is the driver. You say, it looks like my wife, but it isn't because I don't feel it. So the most important thing about who your wife is, is how you feel about her, not how she looks. And that will drive it. So if I disconnect them, in fact, you will say, your brain will start to make a story up. It can't really be her. So it's an illusion, just like the other illusions we were, but if it's an affective illusion, and it's very powerful. But it shows how dominating that you forget or don't know that you are, you think of yourself as walking around in a visual landscape, in a hearing landscape, but you are walking around in an emotional landscape where your brain is evaluating, is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Is this something exciting? Is this something scary? Every second you are walking around in this landscape of how I feel. And if I stop that, you get disoriented. You start to feel like something's really wrong because I'm not feeling what I should be feeling when I'm here. And we'll talk about in schools, kids are in an emotional landscape every minute. They are evaluating you. How do I feel about her or that teacher? How do I feel about that kid next to me? How do I feel about this textbook? How do I feel about this lesson? And you cannot stop it. This middle part of your brain is doing it. It is evaluating that value for you. Where am I in relation to the values of this thing? Whatever's out there, this environment. And it cannot be stopped. And it will dominate. So you as a teacher can sometimes say, I know you've had bad time here in class the last few months, but today it's gonna be different. I'm going to teach an entirely different way, or this is a new lesson, you'll like it. But that kid's nervous system is saying, oh, it looks the same to me. <laughs> and they will override your attempts to say, this is going to be fine, because uh, the nervous system works that way. Okay.